more content from me. Today is the second day of Vlogtober. Um, I'm really stressed out right now. I really should not be focusing on filming this, but you know, I have to. I'm going to Arkansas tomorrow. I still have so much to do to get ready for Vlogtober for the days that I'm not going to be here and I'm kind of stressed out. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so today we're going to be talking about the origin of Halloween. So I found this on like history.org or whatever, the History Channel's website. Um, so it says Halloween is a holiday celebrated each year on October 31st and Halloween 2020 were, will occur on a Saturday. Finally, a Saturday, Halloween. Hopefully we'll still be able to have it and we won't get ruined by COVID-19 like so many other things this year. Um, the tr tradition or, no, the tradition originated with the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain. Sorry if I mispronounced that. When people would light bonfires and wear costumes to ward off ghosts. So it wasn't originally about trick-or-treating, but more of scaring away ghosts. Um, in the 8th century, Pope Gregory III designated November 1st as a time to honor all saints. <clears throat> Soon, All Saints Day incorporated some of the traditions of Samhain. Again, sorry if I mispronounced that. The evening before was known as Hallow's Eve and later Halloween. Over time, Halloween evolved into a day of activities like trick-or-treating, carving jack-o'-lanterns, festive gatherings, donning costumes, and eating treats. Halloween's origin date back to the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain, as I said. Um, no. Oh, now it gives me the pronunciation. Sewin. Pronounce Sewin? Okay. It doesn't even look like it's spelled the same, but pronounce Sewin. The Celts who lived 2,000 years ago, mostly in the area that is now Ireland, the United Kingdom, and Northern France, celebrated their new year on November 1st. The day marked the end of summer and the harvest and the beginning of the dark, cold winter, a time of year that was often associated with human death, which I guess makes sense because it's cold, you die from frostbite back 2,000 years ago, makes sense. Um, Celts believe that on the night before the new year, the boundary between the worlds of the living and the dead became blurred. On the night of October 31st, they celebrate Samhain, when it was believed that the ghosts of the dead returned to Earth. In addition to causing trouble and damaging crops, Celts thought that the presence of the presence of the otherworldly spirits made it easier for the Druids or Celtic priests to make predictions about the future. For a people entirely dependent on the volatile natural world, these prophecies were an important source of comfort during the long, dark winter. To commemorate the event, Druids built huge sacred bonfires where the people gathered to burn crops and animals as sacrifices to the Celtic deities during the celebration. No, during the celebration, the Celts wore costumes, typically consisting of animal heads and skins, and, attempt, and attempted to tell each other's fortunes. When the celebration was over, they relit their hearth fires, which they had extinguished er earlier that evening from the sacred bonfire to help protect them during the coming winter. Did you really bust in right now? Sorry, Annie busted in. Um, by 43 AD, the Roman Empire had conquered the majority of Celtic territory. In the course of the 400 years that they ruled the Celtic lands, two festivals of Roman origin were combined with the traditional Celtic celebration of Samhain. Um, the first was for Feralia? Fer Feralia? A day in late October when the Romans traditionally commemorated the passing of the dead. The second was a day to honor Pomona, the Roman goddess of fruit and trees. The symbol of Pomona is the apple, and the incorporation of the celebration into Samhain probably explains the tradition of bobbing for apples that is practiced today on Halloween. Um, so, 
This is about Halloween coming to America. The celebration of Halloween was extremely limited in colonial New England because of the rigid protest and able to the rigid <laughs> because of the rigid per, Protestant belief systems there. Halloween was much more common in Maryland in the southern colonies. As the beliefs and customs of different European ethnic groups and the American Indians meshed, a distinctive, a distinctive, not distinctly American version of Halloween began to emerge. The first celebrations included play parties, which were public events held to celebrate the harvest. Neighbors would share stories of the dead, tell each other fortunes, dance, and sing. Colonial Halloween festivities also featured the telling of ghost stories and mischief making of all kinds. By the middle of the 19th century, annual autumn festivities were common, but Halloween was not yet celebrated everywhere in the country. In the second half of the 19th century, America was flooded with new immigrants. These new immigrants, especially the millions of Irish fleeing the Irish potato famine, helped to popularize the celebration of Halloween nationally. So thank you. Irish immigrants. <laughs> so the last thing I have is the history of trick-or-treat. Borrowing from European traditions, Americans began to dress up in costumes and go house to house asking for food or money, a practice that eventually became today's trick-or-treat tradition. Young women believed that on Halloween they could divine the name or appearance of their future husband by doing tricks with yarn, apple parings, or mirrors. In the late 1800s, there was a move in America to mold Halloween into a holiday more about community and neighborly get-togethers than about ghosts, pranks, and witchcraft. At the turn of the century, Halloween parties for both children and adults became the most common way to celebrate the day. Parties focused on games, food, foods of the season, and festive costumes. Parents were encouraged by newspapers and community leaders to take anything frightening or grotesque out of Hall Halloween celebrations because of these efforts, Halloween lost most of its superstitious and religious overtones by the beginning of the 12th century. Um, I think we're kind of back to the scary. I don't really know. But I found that interesting, so I hope you found that interesting. Um, thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below your thoughts on the origin of Halloween. Um, make sure you subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be uploading every single day in October for Vlogtober. So I will see you guys tomorrow for tomorrow's video. Bye.